afternoon. Good evening. We're close to the evening. Uh, so this is the start of our first uh, uh, finance committee's workshop for the town council. And um, in speaking with the um, school board's chair, Chris Ciazzo, uh, we decided that this first one would be a great opportunity for us to really have this in a workshop format with the school uh, school's finance committee, which is uh, we're lucky because it also includes the chair of the school board and the past chair of the school board. So uh, there's a lot of experience here as, long as, um, as well as Dr. Ann Twistle. Um, just for the record, I just wanted to mention that we have president. We do have Christine Messengill from the school board, Donna Bealy from the school board, uh, Peter Hayes from the town council, Bill Donovan from the town council, and myself is uh, Sean Baby. We do have uh, staff that's with us representing both the schools and the town. We have our manager, Tom Hall, our uh, superintendent, Dr. N George Entwistle, and our business office manager, Kate Bolton, and then the uh, finance director for the town, Ruth Porter. So uh, welcome. Um, in setting this format, it's a fairly simple format for this uh, workshop because it is intended to be an open discussion and dialogue about how we set the base and the framework for us to move forward um, in those areas where our paths will cross around finance in particular and planning for the future um, as it relates to that. And so I have put forward, um, and Chris and I put forward an agenda that does have eight items. I've, I've tried to put some time frames around that because yeah. um, we all have families and it's early and um, our staff would like to go home early as well, or not early, but at least at a reasonable time. So um, they are suggested, but I would like to, for us to all kind of keep in mind those time frames. Um, so outside of that, what I also wanted to include in listening to um, a lot of citizens is also provide an opportunity for some public comment both at the beginning of this uh, dialogue as well as at the end. So um, what I would like to do is open it up the microphone, um, as the folks in the technology room, to our, uh, anybody that would like to speak. We do have several people here from citizens and town council members and a staff member as well. Um, would anybody like to get up and speak? <coughs> if you could just uh, uh, indicate your name, just like a council meeting, indicate your name and address, that would be great. Mike Turek, 11 Bayberry Lane. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> <laughs> That's a record. <laughs> five, five words. That was wonderful. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, not seeing any. We're going to go ahead and move forward. Um, what I um, have listed as our next item, and uh, keep in mind that the, the purpose of this presentation around our financial reports is both from the town and the school is to acclimate ourselves. Um, I haven't been involved in town finances in uh, I think it's three years, maybe three and a half. We do have one new town counselor. And the goal is to kind of get ourselves acclimated at the highest level and not really focus on departmental or even line items or even um, new initiatives. It's really just to kind of familiarize us with that because there is different uh, financial formatting. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, the manager and the superintendent. So do you want to, uh, Tam will go first. I guess one of the things I'd love to get is some input, and don't feel as though you need to provide it all tonight, but uh, our financial statements uh, are presented in a format that has been developed and kind of massaged over time. Uh, these were kind of points of interest that past finance committees found helpful. That's not to say uh, we can't change that format. So by all means, if there's something that's lacking here, we're pleased to, to work with you and to kind of change that format and make sure we're giving you the sort of information you need. So with that, Ruth, it's best to give us uh, a kind of a quick overview of our financials and then we can move to the school. Um, so I have five sheets here. The first one, for those who are familiar, are the revenues for the town and the school of the general operating budget. And um, what I do towards the bottom is show where we are in terms of our property tax collections. We've had our first uh, tax process go through. so. Um, we're not doing too bad with that. We're at about 49.98% collected. We've, we're five months into the year, so theoretically we should be about 42% collected or spent on average. It's, you know, it, it will fluctuate. So this first page shows the various um, town, it says total general fund revenues, but it's really town general fund revenues, and then it shows the school's revenues and uh, with, with their adult debt also. And these are the categories we use for our financial statement audit. So those are the ones that we're currently using. Again, you know, we can we can do it by department. We can do it in uh, multiple ways, however you, you would like. And if there's no questions on those, or if there are, are any questions, Ruth, what's the difference uh, between original and revised? When 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 is it become the original estimate, and when does it become the revised? 
Um, usually it will have to go through the council to to be revised, although it doesn't look like it's revised, but the totals aren't. Oh, it's just rounding. Okay. So um, generally speaking, if we knew, for example, that uh, state revenue sharing were going to come in at another 500000 we might come to the council and ask for a lot. But otherwise, it's, it's pretty what consistent. was presented and approved at the budget process. Correct. At the final vote. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we also do, uh, we're pretty much on a cash basis for our revenues except for uh, items we bill, which includes property taxes and rescue billing. So we do those on an accrual basis. Uh, page two is our expenditures, are our expenditures, and those are on an accrual basis. And again, we do this by department for the town, and then we list the school and adult ed separately towards the bottom. Yeah. In terms of the financial statements, usually we have uh, higher categories in this. We have es essentially what's called uh, general, which is pretty much legislative down through planning. Then we have community uh, public service, which might include senior, uh, the community services, library, public health and welfare, and SEDCO. Then we have public safety, which includes fire police and public works is our fourth one, and then there's this other category, which pretty much encompasses everything else, including county tax. Uh, so we could break them out into those larger categories if you wanted to, so that's something to think about. In terms of the way we have it presented today, if you look at, for example, county tax, for 100% spent, we have to have that paid before November 1st, November 1st. so <coughs> they get their money up front but they usually wait until we have gone through one tax collection, so that's, that's nice. Uh, so if you look at the percentages, most of them are on track. We pay the library on a quarterly basis, so they're right now at 50% spent. Uh, the same with uh, debt service, we pay our principal and one interest payment in October and November, so that's why that's showing a higher percentage spent than you know our 42%. And again, encumbrances, the fourth column of numbers, are those purchase orders that uh, say that we intend to buy something. We may not have, we might have it on order, we haven't paid for it yet. And so therefore, uh, it's an intent to pay, so we show that because it reduces the amount available to spend in other areas. And Public Works just incidentally has the largest dollar amount of encumbrances. Uh, that's all the winter sand and salt and uh, stock up on all the inventory of parks and supplies that's all done in the fall, and, and much of that is bound, uh, wrapped up in different purchase orders and will be drawn down as needed. And then the difference here between the original <coughs> appropriation and revised are purchase orders that were issued in 2014, fiscal year ending 2014, that may still be open in 2015. So some of those, uh, that's why if you were to look at those, the numbers aren't the same. Page three, or the next page, shows the other funds that the town has. We are uh, municipal government runs on funds, is based on funds, and we do the school funds and the town's funds. Special revenue funds is one. Capital projects we have two types. School has two types. One is for minor. One is for major. <coughs> and the town has cemetery funds, and the school has scholarship funds. So we record the revenues and expenditures. That's what's on this page. Some have budgets. Some do not usually just the general fund budgets that have budgets. <coughs> the next page, and you know, I think the school will probably do their own, but this is, this is how we present our audit. Kate and I are working on consolidating this, so we're both presenting in similar, in, in essentially the same fashion right now. I think we're in different, uh, the numbers at the end hopefully will tie, but the individual how we get to them are a little bit different. And they're pretty much on track with that. Not to get through, Kiki, um, I forgot the GAP measurement that you f have to follow. What's the name of the GAP? GAP is the government approved accounting practices. GASB, GASB, GASB pronouncements sorry. are what we have to follow. It's called pronouncements? Pronouncements. Okay. And uh, they do have new pronouncements out there that tend to reduce our fund balance and increase the workload, but <laughs> However, the pres under GASB, um, the presentation can be uh, conforming to whatever the needs of the town are, right? Correct. For a financial Except statement. For the financial right, audit. yes. The audit has to be done in a standardized format. Correct. So that's what allows us to 
Um, I do have one question, because um, this is intended to be a high-level revision. Um, I know at the end of the year, don't we have a reconciliation process <coughs> where we go if there's a line item adjustments we, or departmental adjustments, so you might see an adjustment at the end of the year? If we, um, I think the way it wor work, works now is departments can approve like transfers within their own department. Yep. If, if finance overdraws its budget, then we go to the town manager and say, hey, we're going to overdraw our budget. Right. And then he can bring it to the council to make budget amendments. Okay. The problem is that we found that as we've made those adjustments, you know, we, we try to guess what we're going to do between now and June if we're over now. But if we're not, then we have to come back again, and then we might have to come back again. So those are the kinds of uh, concerns with, yeah, the, with the budget the revisions amendments. would happen at the department level. There are things that happen in individual lines within the department. Uh, if I hold my uh, department managers accountable, you need to work within your department budget. Um, but should they go over, then that would be a revision that would be worthy of council attention and action. Okay. Uh, the last page are just some estimated, are just some selected revenues <coughs> that we use. Our top three revenues are uh, for town and school are the property tax, ec educational subsidy, and then excise revenue. So we show those, and then some of the other town revenues that um, in the past have been significant. And I show the investment interest because it used to be significant, and now it's hmm. not. Back in the good old days. The only thing I flag is the building related <coughs> things, building permits, plumbing, and electrical permits are all lackluster. They're, they're lagging a bit from mm -hmm. where we should be. That's, of course, seasonal. Um, there's a lot of interest and activity out there, so we're very hopeful that things will pick right back up in the spring. So we'll track that carefully. So, if anyone has any questions. Do you, as part of your presentation, do you do a balance sheet that shows? cash and liability and that type of thing. We haven't in the past, but I know that's uh, been a question that others not on the council and school board have asked about. So that's something we can work on if, if that's what you'd like to see. Yeah, I think it would kind of, <laughs> kind of give you kind of a snapshot of where where all that... The rest of it is. Yes. Right? yes. And, and what we can do um, um, later is talk about uh, deliverables and expectations in the formatting so that it's consistent for us so that... Um, you know, we get it, some, uh, everyone has different ideas of what they want to see in the level of detail. So I think I, I'm totally in agreement because you know, capitalization for a community is an extremely important measure for credit agencies, just as much as fund balance. So, and those are balance sheet items. So I support that. Um, Dr. Antwistle. Um I will. I will defer to um, yes. Kate. Um, hi. I'm, I'm really delighted to be sitting at the table with you folks. Um, Colette was nice enough to send out in your packet or to post, I'm not sure exactly how you all access the paperwork, but the things that Ruth has just gone through, um, I received off the website. And, and you have a packet that's our school first quarter report. Thank you, the guy. You've got it. Um, I'm not sure whether you've had a chance to take a look at that, but um, the reason that I put that in there was Ruth and I work from the same data. We're all in the same uh, system. The financial system is Munis. If she goes in and pulls the data the same way that I pulled the data, it's all right there for both of us. What's a little bit different is how we're expected to report out to our various stakeholders. So what you're looking at there is the report that I do for the school board, and I do it quarterly. It ties into a report that I do to the Department of Education quarterly. And um, the reason that I've given it to you sort of raw, uh, two reasons. One is there's a little narrative, and, and Dr. Antwistle will tell you that I like to tell stories. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a weird accountant. He calls me the poetic accountant. Are they fiction or nonfiction? These are strictly nonfiction. Non nonfiction, um, but very poetic. But there's a little bit of, of analysis and a little bit of help in reading the financials because a lot of us are lay people and we're not really all that used to uh, following these kind of data sheets. So uh, if you do get a chance to read that narrative, it will explain a couple things to you. Um, any kind of um, variances of note that I might think would be important in the course of a quarterly report. You know, these are the things we're keeping our eyes on. These are things that are doing well. These are things that are doing not so well. Um, the, the short and quick and easy answer for today, because I'm adhering to my five minutes, I hope, <coughs> is that we're really doing fine. Uh, Ruth talked about the idea that we're 42% short 
through the uh, fiscal year, and um, you'll see that our accounts are running just a little over 42% on the expenditure side. Um, I'm going to pass this out actually while I while I speak, and this is a um, financial report in the same format that you see in my quarterly, but it's for uh, the year to date through November 30, because the quarterly only goes through the end of September. Um, my purpose in handing this to you is not to go line by line, but to um, tie to Ruth's numbers. And when she said, hopefully they look the same, they really do. I went through her numbers and my numbers, and you know, oddly enough, they all came out the same, and I, uh, I know where, where they're all coming from. But because we have different stakeholders, we do have different reporting requirements. And you'll see that my sheet goes by the, uh, is organized into the voter categories that the Department of Education and the legislature set up for schools. So those uh, categories in the general fund, if you look at Ruth's list, Ruth is going through Munis and saying, well, this is what the function of those accounts is, so I'm going to lump them together by, based on their function. I have to lump them together in a slightly different way to report out to the DOE to say, you know, this money is going toward guidance, and this money is going towards libraries, and this money is going towards special education. So, again, the bottom line is going to come out the same, but the chunking is different. And so I wanted to familiarize you a little bit with the way that we do that report. And we try to stay consistent with that because at the end of the day, when we go to the voters for our budget, we want to be able to talk in those same categories that we're asking them to respond to when we put that budget request out there to the public. Um, so the same way that you see with, with Ruth's reports, you'll see those FY15% used columns on the far right. And essentially, we're, we're looking to be somewhere in the 42% area at the end of the day. The bottom line is right about there. Um, school tends to be a little bit more front-loaded than uh, the town because we do purchase heavily at the beginning of the year to set ourselves up to go through the school year. So a lot of our licensing, insurance, softwares, um, and uh, instructional supplies, things like that are going to be purchased before we even get through the first quarter. So the first quarter for us tends to be a little bit high, and then we even out over the, the course of the rest of the year, similar to the way that Tom described public works. Um, that's kind of the, the super nutshell explanation, and um, I know this is a very important meeting and the time is precious, so what I would want to do is encourage you folks to give me a call, spend some time with me, um, read through the stuff, and let me know if there's anything else that I can give you, and I, I'll put the same, um, the same offer out there on the table that if there are other bits and pieces that you'd like to see on the school side particularly um, that you'll let Dr. Entwistle know or let me know, and uh, we can certainly provide that information. Is there, uh, just to, while we're thinking and talking about it, is there an interest on the part of the Town Finance Committee to simply receive these, not that we have to have a presentation, but to the extent that they're being produced for your own purposes? Yeah. I'd love to see it. I, I think this is, uh, um, by the way, a good financial story always starts with a narrative. So, <laughs> and every financial statement says something different. Um, I, I personally would love to see this as a, you know, if not the rest of the council. But yes. It's nice to know, especially um, it's more for me. I, I mean, I'll be honest. Um, I'm kind of a bigger picture. Um, I'd rather look at a three-year trend of an item rather than just an individual year. So, as an example, you know, looking at the state subsidy, the GPA. In a given year, whether or not you've got a 100% or whether you're at 50% doesn't really tell me any stories. Mm. Um, the state subsidy over the last five years will tell me a big story. Yeah. So it's, for me, there's a lot of ratio, and I've already had a chance to talk to Ms. Porter. Ratio analysis and trending is a better tool for me than the individual line items in, in certain major categories. So well, you know, it's one of the items that yeah. I was going to bring up for our discussion later about what we would like to see going forward because you know, I'll either take this and do my own uh, research, or I'd love to have a nice graph. We do create a lot of charts. I mean, particularly yeah. that that whole revenue to expenditure picture. We, we've, we've got that. you know multi-year over ten years. Multi-year stories, um, so we can share that kind of thing. Um, and what I might do is just send you what I have from last year, and then you can see whether that and, and is helpful. And then the other piece is. We don't actually generate monthlies on the school side. We generate quarterlies because by the time people get through the monthly, we've 
can't they can't react to it anyway. So we, we go on the DOE's timetable, um, and those quarterly reports are usually, my process is to present them to the school board finance committee. They vet them with me, they ask questions, they tweak my, my uh, report so that it makes sense for the rest of the board. Then it's delivered to the rest of the board and also posted on our website. So it's a public document. Um, and I can simply circle you folks in as I do that, uh, the dissemination of that report each quarter. And the narrative is always limited to one page. Good. So it's an easy... No, it's well, it's <laughs> front and page. <laughs> front and page. He's trying, right? He's trying to get it. It's, it's a, an easy read. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I missed. So I know um, these are definitely available online and accessible at least to the public, whether I'm a counselor or not. Um, the trend analysis, the charts, do you provide that also, maybe? Um, Last year. We have actually used that as part of our conversations in budget in a number of different ways at a number of different times. So um, one of the things that I don't know if we'll talk about this evening, but one of the things that we're working on is getting some more of those data points up on our website. But in the meantime, of course, I can send you whatever seems to be of interest yeah. to you in, in year-to-year -year material. So let's, um, I, I hope at the end we can talk about that so that we can get everyone's in so you're not getting five different requests or mm -hmm. five different things. So but I, thanks. That's, I mean, that's wonderful. Any, other, any questions for uh, the school side of the finances? Thank you very much. Um, great information. Um, again, the purpose of, just to highlight, the purpose of really covering that is, um, again, to familiarize ourselves and to see the similarities but also understand the differences because of the agencies that they have to report to. But then hopefully that we can then take this and in our next session identify uh, through dial, you know, what is it that we want to see. Um, some people may like and want to see this type of detail on a regular basis and it is accessible, but um, others may want something a little bit different. It's just getting a consensus on what we want to see. So uh, thank you very much. That was great. Um, really, the next piece uh, to this is really the um, budget, pro what is being labeled on the agenda, really is a budget process improvement discussion. And I just want to uh, play mostly for the public, because all, all of us here, except the staff, have been engaged in this process. What um, the school board chair, and by the way, for the record, I did want to mention um, that Chris Siazzo, the school board's finance chair, did send his regrets for not being able to attend. Um, he did mention that he had a um, out of town or maybe even out of state business uh, obligation. So, uh, just for the record, Chris did try to make it, but couldn't, and then he will be here next time, hopefully. Um, so, what the school board had done, and actually it initiated on their own, and then when it was shared with us, this is something that uh, was going on. And I was like, wow, this is great. And it was an idea that Dr. Entwistle had uh, developed on his side. And um, what we did is that we presented to um, all of our uh, school board members as well as all of our town council members to provide feedback regarding areas of really process improvement regarding our budget, um, how we set goals, how we determine uh, processes or plans, um, you know, budget timelines. The three questions that we asked um, for feedback, um, and by the way, we did not marry them together yet. Uh, the goal is to actually, that's what we're going to have a conversation about, but the three uh, questions were, uh, what improvements would you like to see made to the budget development process that included schedule, sequence, meeting types, formats, and other? What improvements would you like to see made to budget planning and goal setting? And then third was, what other town council or school board dialogue topics do you feel are substantive and beneficial to address to provide the best budget for Scarborough? In a way, there's also a secondary influence to this out of, the, out of our own um, uh, influences um, or our own opinions that several of us, if not most of us, have received feedback from uh, constituents that are here today as well as others that have asked us to take into consideration a number of items, everything from the county tax to capital improvements and other items. So I want people to understand that we um, hopefully have, will incorporate those into our conversation. Um, may not be in great detail at this point, but uh, they are in the back of our head. And so um, what I would like to do is to maybe um, turn this over to the town manager because he had the wonderful job of putting all those together to keep them anonymous, uh, putting them together and to uh, present that, um, at least on the town council's responses and then Dr. Antwistle sure. can talk about the school board. Sure. Yeah, just let me say a couple things by way of process and uh, we were trying to find a way to present all of this information up for everyone to kind of see and consume at the same time and it was just unwieldy, frankly. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what George did and what I did for our respective boards is we took uh, all of the different input received from our respective uh, board members and we've tried to keep them substantively uh, intact, if you will, but we have condensed them just for readability and, and manageability. 
and we've produced those on two different sheets that have been provided to you this evening. So uh, the difference you'll note at the top, one is school and one is town. And so these are all the responses received from individual members on either side. And I think the exercise tonight I'd love to assist you in is to take, I, I would propose, question by question, uh, compare uh, town responses and school responses, and ideally find the commonalities there. And um, I think it would be great, and I think it would be good, a very healthy exercise to identify those areas in common or those points of agreement, if you will. And so I, I, I'm prepared to be your scribe this evening, if that would be helpful. Um, I have a poster board up with each question, and I can fill in as we identify these areas that we have agreement on, if that's acceptable. Thank Sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it comes out something like this, right? We have right. town, school, and it, it might even be a bigger pie than that. Let's hope it is, that there's more areas of, of agreement. So because we have this space available, it doesn't need, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't need to fill it all, but if we do, all the better for it. So again, I'm pleased to um, you just help this. I did spend a little time for myself, maybe to help prime the pump here to identify what appears to be some areas of, of agreement, um, mm -hmm. but I, I'm pleased to also take lead from you. I mean, do you just want us to start shouting them out at you, or? <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is meant, right. to, Sean, right? It's meant to yeah. be an open, Absolutely. collaborative yeah. process. I mean, so. at first glance, yeah. just um, more joint sessions, it says, um, mm -hmm. throughout the year between the school board and town council and uh, both finance committees, so both both school and town said that, so check. I saw that, so. <laughs> so, yeah, so I just want to ask a question, is that joint sessions of the finance committee or joint sessions of both larger bodies, do you know? Uh, I don't know. Well, that it could be both. I mean, you know, it depends really when. If we were talking about budget cycle, I would tend to think that when we were having, like, the public hearings and things like that, that it should be more of a joint feature as opposed to the council maybe have an interaction where if somebody stepped up to the podium, I mean, I don't know how you all feel about it, but I know that when we've been sitting, um, listening to people in the audience come up and ask a question that we all are sitting here and we all know the answer to, it would just be very nice to just look at the person and say, here's, here's the answer, or we can provide you the answer tomorrow if we don't have it right off the top cuff and then provide it to the general public after that, so if we didn't have that answer, we could certainly make that available, because it seems like people come up and don't ever, you never find out if they really got to find out what they wanted to know. Well, those are two different issues, it seems to me. Could be. Mm. I, I, I think um, from the, in doing the consolidating from the school board side, I think there's an interest of, uh, primarily in, in having this group meet more frequently, so more joint sessions here. I think that when you look at some process improvement, um, suggestions, and I, I think that you might see it on both sides as well, um, how we uh, roll the budgets out and how we process the budgets with the public is also suggest is, is also um, up for uh, modifying in terms of doing a really more, I think uh, I saw something from you, Sean, about a t town hall, you know, sort of a town hall setting. So there's, so, so that may actually require more budget sessions as well. So more public sessions perhaps that are joint <coughs> and um, more meetings of this group. So can I capture that thought that at least more joint meetings of, of this group seems to be a resonating feature? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say joint, uh, number one is joint sessions. You get to have two trees off of that. One is for the committee, the other one is for the, uh, for the board. Mm -hmm. um, the second piece that Dr. Eisenhower brought up was really about the delivery, and that to me is the communicative place of what comes out of that, um, which is really kind of, um, it's incorporated in a couple of different areas here, which I agree with because it's one of the things that I mentioned that I would like to see at the end where both the two finance chairs are really take ownership and a shared ownership of presenting all of our budgets together to the community and to our groups respectively so that we understand. So, um, and to me that's, that's a communication which might be the number one over on the school board side. So that's, uh, am I hearing it right? That would be a second uh, yeah. communication. And I, I personally, I think uh, when you communication is such a large, broad topic, 
It's about how we deliver the budget. It's how we um, build relationships around that budget process. The trust that needs to be uh, um, enveloped into, um, you know, how estimates or how um, line items are created or, or um, developed. So to me, communications, although broad, <coughs> me encompasses a lot, and it's about. Uh, what comes out of the committee meetings, it's about what comes mm -hmm. out of the council and the board meetings, it's what, so yeah, one, I would say one, communications is a separate One topic. point that's been historically awkward for me, when I present the budget, which includes the school, um, I simply am reporting some very high level stuff, but it's no, subs no, it's no detail, uh, it's not really a, a school budget presentation, and so I think there's a way to front load the process where the school is more actively involved in that initial presentation, I think that would go a long way to help the council and the public as well. And, and maybe, Tom, I mean, so, since we're trying to identify improvements, the, the improvement would be the rollout of the budgets, is, is my yeah. thought. I mean, so, th so that's really the, I think that on both sides, we're saying that we need, a, we need to do a better job of, of communicating, rolling out the budget, and as well um, having, allowing the public to have access to those who have the answers um, to, to be able to respond to questions that they might have. So budget presentation seems to be the, sure. the kind of theme that we're getting mm -hmm. to and that can take a number of different uh, tacks. I like what Sean said about the trust because how mm -hmm. am I as a citizen going to trust this magic number that someone's throwing out there unless I know how that was arrived at or what the process is behind it. So mm -hmm. getting more of that information out earlier on in the process um, it's, it's, it's to everyone's benefit. So, so what kind of format would that presentation take? Are we talking about doing something here in early spring, you know, March 1st, or are we talking about a bigger forum with, like, the high school stage with the community it could take coming? A number of different shapes. I mean, George and I could collaborate on the presentation, so we kind of launch it uh, to the community, to the council and to the community. Uh, and then in the last couple of years, there's been a joint workshop that's been worked in. Typically, it's about three-quarters of the way through the budget process. I think maybe front-loading that, which is uh, a joint meeting that uh, would allow for maybe a much more elaborate, detailed pres presentation, question and answer period, may make some sense as well. So under the budget presentation, I think one of the <coughs> first items should be the uh, determination of a timeline. And that dictates how we present it, obviously, right? It's how we receive information and then how we present the decision. And then it can also, we should talk about the protocols of how it's presented, and I agree. If it, uh, we could either do it here, maybe the first year we see what our response is by doing it here, and if the response is extremely well, then next year we'll do it, uh, you know, at the, at the high school or wherever it might be. Just make sure both chambers are open to see what mm -hmm. the attendance the turnout is. And, it, and the town has, an, I can't remember the process for the school, but um, as, um, as far as the departmental budget presentation, um, that is definitely, that's where the trust comes in because that's the job of the school board to determine departmental issues and line item issues no differently than the town, but having people present so that, um, so when information is shared, then, um, you know, to me that comes into the protocols of our meeting, you know, when can citizens speak, who can speak, and mm -hmm. um, how is information shared. And I think that the rules and policy committee, we can make a recommendation that they take a look at the rules of the town council so that when information is at the town council that we also know. But the hard part is that sometimes we don't know what people are going to say when they get up there. Right. So how do mm -hmm. we know when we're going to not going to have someone present because you have your own meeting the following night and there's a lot of work. So mm -hmm. maybe we can have uh, the rules and policy take a look at that for us at least and then have a representative come and talk and see what works best. I mean, that could be one of our outcomes in that. You know, I think in picking up something to try, I think you and Georgia and I had talked about it too, that as we talk about us coming together more so we have more communication, it's kind of a two-sided sword, if you will. Also, how do we do that with our community? I think that's important too. That's part of the rollout. So I think that communication piece is important both ways. Mm -hmm. And you just touched on it, the concept of some type of town meeting where we actually can bring the public in in some venue by which we can communicate and try to get some input in a constructive way mm -hmm. might be really, I really like that idea. So I don't know how that fits into our process, but thinking about inviting, because you've done that, even you yeah. shared for the school, you do that quite a bit, and you get some great feedback, and you've found ways to take that feedback and kind of incorporate it into 
police responses and other things. So I think I'd really be interested in trying to explore whatever that might be. Well, and, there are, and there are certain obligations that both, that both the schools and the town have for public hearings. So I think what we need to do is we need to just um, refine what a public hearing looks like. And it can be much more of a, you know, um, at the right time or a couple of times during the process, it can be a much more a moderated town hall process of ensuring that people can not only have their opportunity to make comments, but if they have a question, that we have the, all of the right people sitting there and that we get that answer to them then so that, so that we're really controlling how much misinformation or erroneous information is kind of plopped out there to just fester. I'm recalling one thing we did uh, as part of the Wentworth project. We had a large meeting. Uh, I don't remember who was in all involved, but we tried to be thoughtful in terms of having the panelists represent, you know, be prepared and anticipate and represent the sorts of questions we'd expect. We had at the auditorium and folks stood up in the audience and, and asked their questions. Mm -hmm. And I think in an hour and a half or two, we went through every question that was on people's minds. So that might be a way that we could uh, proceed. So just to preserve Peter's thought, uh, this uh, open forum town meeting type um, idea that we're capturing here, we'll talk about how to fit that into the process. I like it. Okay. And that would be all town departments? I think that the, uh, we need to sit down and determine the, uh, uh, the expectations once we agree that it's right. I, I think that would be extremely difficult myself. Um, yeah, I, I, we can't possibly um, be everything for everybody. I mean, if someone's going to ask a minuscule question about how public works operates or what sort of gun the police carry, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think to Sean's point earlier, we really ought to be trying to keep on the macro level rather than counting pencils and paper clips. I mean, that's a lesson for us all to keep in mind. Not but one yeah, would I presume that all of, the, all of the key managers and leaders in the town are present at that open forum. Yeah, maybe not panelists, but they're available as a resource to yeah. answer how, a question. Right. How, yeah. can, how does an open forum differ from joint sessions with the finance committee or the full boards where the public is invited and we televise it uh, and uh, the public is invited to speak at these meetings. Because this is give and take of information yeah. as opposed to mm -hmm. missing a conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, may, they may reach the same end. If the right questions are asked around the table and the answers are given, the public can witness that. But the difference is the public is able to ask the question themselves right. and be provided an answer on the spot. Yeah. It's, it's more we did that town all model. I mean, but public yeah, hearings are probably the worst way to solicit public input, frankly. What's that? Public oh. hearings are sometimes the worst way to to actually get constructive input. You're having someone talking to you and you don't have the chance to respond to it. So, so um, and I think so. You get a different audience that comes out too. So, yeah, you know, yeah. well, publicize no, yeah. those that yeah. don't normally come to this venue might come to that venue. Because we they did. feel that the town council meeting or the town right. public hearing is just that. Yes. I get to come up, I get right. to say what I want to say, I sit back down, whether or not I ever get my answer, you know. To me, if a school board member or a town council member or um, who we do have there as professional staff can't answer, the great thing with technology is you can always revisit the video, find out if we did it the same way that we do by, you know, who you are and where you're from, we'll get the answer and make sure that yeah, someone gets yeah. back to them. That's great. Um, I mean, that to me is the best way that we can do it. The other thing is, you are all so accessible. You yeah. should be in our conduits of a residence. If someone has a question, you can ask it on their behalf at, mm -hmm. at any time. There's other ways to, to get those questions posed and, and answered. If we're able we, to know far enough in advance and have a plan for that type of evening, too, we could solicit uh, questions ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so great. that you could you know, yeah. post That's a great idea. Yeah. open a forum on the website and say, type in your question. And, That's a great idea. You know, yeah, I think the challenge with that will, will be to set expectations because uh, just the unpredictability of a session like that, it can go off on a tangent in a hurry. and, and just all of us recognizing that we'll do our best to, to work through the questions that come forward, but we're probably not going to have all the details. It, it yeah. could be moderated. That's right. Uh, it has to be, yeah. This town has done this format before um, because I've attended it. Um, and there was a moderator on the floor in front of the stage and the town council and the school board be on the stage. And I, I think the, the 
the fire chief was there and chief of police and whatever person just was in the audience and wanted to ask a question just came up to the microphone, asked it, whichever, whoever that applied to, then was the answer simply as that. And did it work? Was it? Yeah. In your opinion, was it? Yeah, and there were, and well, there were plenty of people in the auditorium. Certainly, a lot more than we see at town council or school budget meetings. Must have been something that precipitated that. I, I, that was before my time. <laughs> yes, it yeah. was. Yeah. I'm I'm sure that was, it a, was it actually a town meeting? Know, I, I, you I remember it because we used to have runners to, <laughs> to, get up, to go and get the microphone. Two people mm -hmm. so that they could speak from just there. Yeah. Just they were and they could stand there and speak. And For the next um, the item that I think that needs to be up here, and this is another broad statement because there's several comments that should go under that, is planning. Uh, so when we talk about budget presentations, when we talk about budget presentations, about how we present the information, the decisions, in the planning process, um, there are several comments around um, three year multiple budgets, capital improvement budgets or capital expenditure budgets um, and being consistent um, on both sides of the aisle. Um, and when I said the aisle, the school board, the town council. So, you know, um, coming to maybe some agreement where, you know, all of our capital improvements are on a three year cycle or a five year, whatever is appropriate and we can do a decision on. Um, so, we, and we need to talk about the long range, you know, this master plan has been brought up several times in the past couple of weeks. You know, that's part of that planning process because it impacts future expectations of uh, spending. As it relates to budget, I, th I think it would be great. Um, I, frankly, in my tenure, I've never had the school's capital budget in time to incorporate it as part of the town's capital, and I think it would be great to, to get to the point of having one capital plan that recognizes all town needs. Uh, I don't know if we can pull that off this year, but I think that's a laudable goal. Absolutely. Is that that for yeah, five-year capital budget. So well, if you can just uh, put planning, because to me it's, it's uh, the master plan, it's the capital plan for equipment, it's uh, this budget in itself, a three-year budget. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's just so many different things that should be part of the budget cycle that not only includes that one given year. For the number of years that I've been around, all we really focus on is the expense sheet, and we go line item by line item by line item, and it's the most boring thing in the world. Right. And we don't really talk about what we're going to do in three years. What are we going to do in five? What do we need? Mm -hmm. Excellent point. I was just trying to come up with a tangible target goal that we might be able to achieve as part of rolling out a budget. I, I would say under planning a three to five, because we can, change, we can talk about the level three to five year um, master plan, or master plan as well as a capital plan. And, and for me, I'd like to see the capital plan broken down between project size because there's the, when you talk about capital plan, it could be um, putting in, uh, to me, part of uh, putting in a new uh, school. I mean, that's pretty significant. Yeah. But yet, in our capital budget, we also include a fire truck, which is smaller. So I think that there's different levels of conversation that need to be around that. So uh, what I'm hearing Sean say is that um, in terms of improvements, in the, in the planning, we, we should look and, and consider a multiple year budget projection. That's w one of the issues that's coming, right? I mean, t I think just capturing at them at okay. this point is probably the best thing, Tom, and then we can sort of evaluate their worth. But I, I heard multiple year uh, projection or, or budget um, to the extent that's possible. Um, five year or sort of a, a longer term or five year uh, capital improvement plan for both school and and the town. Um, you had you had said a couple of other, or at least another thing. Um, that the I'm master, this whole concept of a master plan for the town. Uh, um, a master like facilities plan? Yeah. Okay. That goes out probably even further than that. Which yeah. is like a but it's a master facility. It's a facility. It's more of a facility plan, yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that's really important too, because most businesses do that. But as you look at our debt load that we have, and some of the things we might be facing, there may exactly. be some sequencing that we need to do so exactly. we can kind of manage that. So I think that's really helpful. And we've seen in the budgets, in the capital budgets in the past, we've wanted like a new Wentworth school, but I don't think we've ever seen it in a capital budget. It's just you know something that's been needed. So if we could actually put that in, then you can start to to, yeah. to schedule. It's in the ten thousand pound gorilla in, in the room right. for years. I think we've cleared that. But that the bond financing piece uh, <coughs> needs to be, it isn't just 
what are our needs going out five years, mm -hmm. master plan or capital budget plan. It's also where's our bond commitment? When are they going to start to trail off? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so that we can actually determine what what's prudent uh, uh, within looking at these various expenditures. Mm -hmm. Right. The other two points that I, I saw that jumped off the page to me was some notion of uh, us identifying the major drivers, kind of those things that are really driving the budget to the point of the macro level discussion. You can spend four months talking about line by line detail, but there's only, there's probably six or eight or ten things down mm -hmm. in the school combined that are really making the difference in our budgets. So uh, some sort of recognition and discussion of those as part of this process seems <coughs> to make some sense. I think you should capture that. Tom. I, I think you know I, I, we do that with the uh, school budget. <coughs> it's just that in some ways I feel like I'm talking to an empty room when I'm presenting uh, the drivers in, in the budget. So to the extent that this um, this format and this timeline is adjusted, and we have the right people in the right place at the right time, uh, I think it's absolutely critical for the public to understand what are the drivers from the town. What are what are the unfunded mandates that the school is dealing with? You know, those are those are important pieces that, in some ways, um, they're they're non-negotiables. And um, and I think that you know certainly while there's lots of detail that falls underneath that, I can I can I know we've got we're we're ready to go with the budget when I can basically talk in about three sentences and tell you what we're trying to do with this budget. So it's, it's really hitting the, the main pieces. Does everyone agree? Major drivers? Is that okay. the, the, one point we have many have already started moving into question number two. I see. Yeah. 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 So I, I just want to mention, so uh, just to move this forward, because actually now that I think about it, it's bringing up planning, yeah. it's specific to number two, and then I do believe that um, the comments yeah. regarding um, support that as well. So, you want to move, I'm okay with moving the planning one to the next question, okay. and then encapsulating with uh, Dr. Andrew. So major drivers that are here or on number two planning? I think number two, uh, on the number two major drivers. Yeah, I think right. because it's of the absolutely. setting. As long as Somewhere. it's there, so we can <laughs> yeah. put it into the right column after, right? right? As soon as I rip it off, we can't put anything else on there. <laughs> <laughs> so move planning to the next one as well. Make a footnote so you can move planning to the <coughs> Before we leave that, though, I have a question for you. One, one of the things, because I spent some years fi finance in Hannaford, but we, when we did some budgeting, it's sort of a takeoff in this, but we tried to say, what are those expenses that you really don't have much control of? Insurance, energy, you know, some big, broad categories. And then you try to focus on what, what, what items do you have some control over? Mm -hmm. Because that's really where some of the, the trade-offs need to be made and discussed. So as an offshoot of the drivers, I mean, exactly. we can argue about health care forever, but health care is pretty much health care. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know if that's helpful as we think about No, it is helpful. Because, because last year, the way the school department presented the budget, they showed what was uh, their level services budget, what right. would be if we just tried to hold it, everything we've got together mm -hmm. and go forward for another year. Well, there's certain drivers that cause that figure to not be the same as the prior year. Right. That's right. A and we have labor contracts. We have health care <coughs> costs that are outside our control. That's and that helped me to understand because if there's a certain increase associated with that and it happens to be a whopper, mm -hmm. just for better or for worse, mm -hmm. then, it, then it tells you a little bit about where you think you might end up. Right. Exactly. Uh, and, it, uh, and so, to me, that you need not only to know why just staying where you are is important, mm -hmm. but then when you want to say, but we want to move forward with certain things, mm -hmm. we've got a plan to try and advance the quality of the education or the fire department, or then tell me what, the, what that variance column looks like, what the drivers are there that are the big cost items. I don't need to count pencils. And I don't need to look at the school's line items because that's not my job. That's mm -hmm. your job. Mm -hmm. How you spend it once it's approved is your job. Mm -hmm. So it, what I thought was maybe going to be the deal might not turn out to be the deal because seventh grade sports goes out and somebody else gets hired to do something else. Right. Same dollars are spent, 
-hmm. but you end up in the same place, you exactly. you mm -hmm. make the priorities. Exactly. So Tom, I think I'm hearing, and it's and it's a lot on it's a lot on the town side, but I think it's it's consistent with the way that the school budget is developed, which is a, a status quo or level service, whatever you want to call it. There is there is there is that piece that you can look at, and, and it looks as though they're saying that same thing should be done on the town side, so that so that we're we're both looking status quo to start up the new cycle again and be doing the same things that we're doing right now. Um, how much would that cost? With the acceleration in in costs around energy and, as you say, labor costs and, and some of the other things, and then really differentiate as we do with. We look at new initiatives, and and so that those new initiatives are really those things where we're either trying to rebuild programs that were lost, or we're trying to trying to keep up in terms of doing a good job and getting kids ready for college and, and career. Uh, in you know more of an investment. Well, you know, I think one thing that you'll hear about is an investment in technology at the high school. That's I mean that's a that's a new initiative, if you will, and it's a, and. It also happens to be a big ticket item, so that's I'm sure going to get a lot of attention. But looking at the base and then being able to say, okay, the base would bring us here. How much, you know, how much are we agreeing is a reasonable level of investment in terms of of uh, new initiatives? We can do that with all due respect, with the exception of last year and the finance chair last year encouraged me to include, I think it was 11 or 12 positions that we've, we've been talking about, but I've never had. Uh, the ability to put them in the budget I did last year, and then many of them have been packed out. But with all due respect, more times than not, my budget is status quo. There, there's not huge new spending, but uh, I understand your point. Yeah, yeah. It's certainly something we can develop. Is that uh, a point worth capturing? Yeah. Uh, I would actually label all the, the whole conversation with different ideas budget <coughs> presentation again. It's just here, um, if I heard what I heard was. We want to see um, the same level of information regarding um, a zero flat or maintain the status quo plus incremental changes based upon whatever level of investment that you have. But then also to provide an analysis of what other cost drivers, I believe, was brought up. Amazing. You know, what other cost drivers. So, right. you know, take out health care is a big cost driver because it's so volatile. <coughs> Wages is a cost driver, but it's not volatility because we know it is in the contract. But it kind of encapsulates all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and I wanted to mention about new investment. I was actually going to recommend that be a, uh, at least, uh, when I say new, this is truly new, because I did have Councilor Holbrook mention to me, and it's a very good idea. We need to start thinking about where do we want to move to town. I mean, we, right. we hear about where the school has had a development day to talk about these are the things that we need to do, not only to maintain, but this is going forward. I don't think we've ever had that on the town side. You know, what if we're energy dependent? What can we do to bring, I mean, I'm being facetious and some solar panels to all of our municipal buildings so that we become independent on our own for energy costs. You know, what can we do on top of that? You know, the types of vehicles that we're purchasing. You know, what are those things? I'm not saying we're going to do them, but we've never been able to be able to explore those because we're reactionary to the budget, you, you know, because it's so arduous to go through. So I'd love to see some type of, uh, at least on the town side, I know the school does it already, you talk about more strategic planning? Yeah. yeah. Did you want to put the drivers up there? Did you want to yeah. capture that major driver? Oh, cost drivers. Yeah, major cost drivers. How, how much do you think uh, the long range planning uh, uh, addresses this? The committee structure addresses it. We have committees that. Uh, are intended to look at the whole panoply of things that make up a community. Uh, and I think of those as we should be challenging them and ourselves to bring forward ideas for the town council's consideration or it's okay, it would be the school, just the way the school board did. So I, uh, I'm not sure that we don't already have at least somewhat in place this framework because uh, I've been, I've been on the energy thing for the last year, and we had the TriGen project, we had the solar panel project. Uh, I've been talking with the chairman about let's have another meeting pronto to really talk about what can we do out of this year. We only got 11 months left, so let's get cracking on, on that. And that's so, 
I think you're right. I think committees are suggested when you think of energy, historic preservation, affordable housing, those because you form committees and given them yep. responsibility, services, uh, senior, back, senior advisors. Back, those are priorities that, that, that are long range in, in nature. Uh, have we ever sat down as a council? You sat down and identified those and articulated them out? No. You probably, someone has an idea and, yeah. and it makes some sense and you move forward. But there's never been a strategic conversation around the bigger it's, it's the role, right. Right. But to answer yeah. your question about the role of the Finance Committee, I think one, it can be an accountability point for us to be able to go to them as part of our budget process and ask those committees to come forward yeah. and give us a report about what their major initiatives recommendations are so that we can consider them. Yeah. Because I, I know that we can't do all the work, right. um, whether it's us or just the council as a whole or even the school board, but ask those com committees to come forward. Um, that way we've at least allowed the opportunity and then it also gives us a chance as a whole to say to those committees, we want recommendations about where we can move the community. Right. So I think that there is some give and take in that because, um, and you know, I give myself a uh, hard time because I have, I don't know, have we ever gotten recommendations out of those committees as part of the budget process to move forward? So while they may be doing those initiatives, there's a, there's a lack of communications about where they've been working and they've been working hard at and then where we're going to take it. So I want to kind of build on that as part and, of the budget. That, and earlier uh, this year, CEDCO had a meeting of all the committees. And, and the thing that came out of that more strongly than anything else was to be able to have a means of communicating with each other, right. of reporting of what are you up to? Because there's got to be a synergy that comes out of it, which is what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That maybe the uh, finance committee would be able to uh, be that, but I oftentimes think the town council and its leadership and the town manager would, would be that. When, when we did Wentworth, we had committees that yeah. did just that. They came forward, they worked at their little committee, the green committee or the whatever it might have been, the outside facilities committee, and they put out recommendations then to the full committee to take in for consideration and stuff ended up on the cutting room floor and stuff yeah. that said, right. you know what, this isn't going to happen, but this rises to the level of we need to do this, it can be energy efficient, et cetera, et cetera. So that really... All great discussion. I just want to kind of bring us back to what's starting to together, which is this is really about improving our budget process. And much of what you talk about has is, is long range and it spans certainly beyond one budget, probably 10 years, something even this year. The reason why I bring it up is because at, at some point it has to start in one given year, even though you may not accomplish yep. a significant portion of what you need, but at least it prepares us for the next next budget cycle so that there's no reason why there's no communication. So capture that thought, uh, simply strategic planning, is that it sounded also like visioning, yeah. like where, where do you, I mean that's what I was hearing a bit in terms of where do, where do the people of the town see this town 10 years from now, what, is it, what does it look like here, you know, and, and I think that, that that we do the open dialogue, which is where do you envision these schools, these are your schools, what do you, what do you want to see? And what's important to you in terms of improving these schools as we go forward? It's, re it's a very forward-thinking um, strategic planning is 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 a pretty uh, pretty scientific process, mm -hmm. where the visioning is really more, um, you know, getting getting a sense of where things are going, and it sounded like energy-wise and all these other other areas. I don't I don't know to what extent it it's a it's a budget thing at this well, point. I, I, but I know for a fact your process. Some of which is 18 months old or older. In future budget years, you'll see those priorities come make their way through the budget office right. and tie it back to that dialogue process. Right. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what I'm. See, I see the growth of this idea being more sort of at the town council leadership level and go from there because it, the finance committee may have a role right. uh, in, in advancing it, but I'm not sure exactly okay. what that is. This, that was my point. But this conversation is kind of bigger than it is. what you can do in the committee. Mm -hmm. But you could say that you wanted the, the existing committees to, in some way, uh, more directly inform the budget process, which I think was a comment that was made. It, you know, we've never asked them for their input, so that would be something that you could actually do, is you know, reach out to those, to those committees that already exist, that are already doing work. Uh, I just want to be clear. No, I think the Norman Island is a council liaison, and each staff will help um, bring their initiatives along, whether they have budget priority or implications or not. So, 
we can always do better, but uh, there, there's yeah. two back already in place. Yeah, to Tom's point, since I started this, I, I see his point, and that is that this is an item for the town council and our finance committee to be discussed further. And it's not really a common issue between the two groups, so therefore it's not really. And I'll, I'll definitely make it as a note for us to bring up later. This is mm -hmm. really tangible. We can sink our teeth into it as part of as budget preparation right now. Yes. There was some commentary around um, on the goal setting part of it, uh, realistic goals. Some of that comes through on the school board side, <laughs> not, so, not so much on the town side. We're, we're in the narrative, Tom, does that appear? So, so we haven't looked at these. Well, I, think it's, uh, I think that's a term that he chose um, to, to encapsulate many people's comments. Yes. Yeah. Um, because um, I was going to ask you kind of, um, uh, with a smile, say, how do you define realistic? Uh, what I consider realistic may be arbitrary to somebody else. You know, so I mean, that becomes a very personal decision. I think from you know, some people may say I want a zero budget line, uh, zero budget um, cost increase, no matter what case we are. And I know a son that may sit there and say, "Oh, thank you for the extra million dollars, but I also want more." So I mean, you've got a very wide pendulum swing on that. So to me, that's a very hard thing to kind of find any real solution for. The problem is that the goal isn't realistic. You set yourself up for failure, and you're never going to reach it. Yeah. Um, I just, it doesn't seem productive to set a goal that you know, must know at the front end that you can't reach. Okay. Is that if worth putting up <coughs> realistic goals? If you labeled it maybe not realistic but informed or thoughtful or something like that, where you have a a sense that you're going to have a dialogue about it, because I agree with Councillor Bayvon's point that realistic is, yeah, achievable is nice. Realistic is a tough one. <coughs> it's very personal. You know, maybe <coughs> maybe my observation might be, because I've seen hospital financing, and I've seen sort of municipal financing and business financing. And if you're in business, and I spent 25 years in a supermarket chain, you always start your budget process as where do you think your revenue is going to be? I mean, you only can move so many groceries to a supermarket. You kind of, your constraint was here's your top line revenue. And then you needed to build a budget off of that that delivered to the bottom line what you needed. And hospitals, I mean, the way the hospital financing works, they figure out all the things they want to do and then they build their revenue by just increasing charges for what they need. So I think part of that is how do we kind of change the dialogue to what can we as a community afford to invest as sort of a, a benchmark of here's the total pie. And then how do we have a conversation about once we have what we think realistically the total pie is, how do we make the community decisions about how we want to spend those resources? It's a little different. Instead of building it from the bottom up, here's what we want, and that drives the mill rate. You start at a place of saying, what do we want to spend as a community? What can we afford to spend to accomplish all our needs? And how do, we, how do we get there? It's just a little different twist on how you do it. Help me out. What goes up? Mm -hmm. I, I think um, mm -hmm. it, it sounds as though um, not everybody is jumping to the realistic or there's, there's uh, some debate about what that word should be. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I see connected here is um, on the school side, it's saying more collaborative process and the goal setting between the two organizations. And right over here, you, ha you, s you can uh, see that um, it is, uh, gosh, I just lost it now. Uh, uh, goal setting for the budget should be done jointly, school board and town council. I mean, it, it, we're just trying to, we're doing a true exercise, which is a very effective way to learn, of comparing and contrasting and finding what's the same Though they both say a cooperative, collaborative goal setting process. I agree with that. Joint budget goal setting? Yep. Yeah. Collaborative goal setting does sound mm -hmm. like that, that resonates. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, the ch the, and the challenge that you have in that is that, so for me, a realistic budget is one that's approved by a majority of any board. Because it's obviously realistic to the majority of that body. The issue comes down to is when the people that are in the minority are upset because of that, and then they go out um, and uh, exercise their free will, of course, um, and then suggest that it's incorrect or 
you know, that, that there's something wrong with it, things like that. So it's about the second piece of that is that we can have a collaborative process, but when it comes to push to shove and that budget's approved, um, you know, uh, we have to be able to communicate outward that it was a decision that's best for the community no matter what, which is, goes back to kind of the first part around communication. I mean, maybe this is I'm naive, but wouldn't it be great to get to the end of the budget process and you're ready to go for voter validation? Mm -hmm. uh, where the, both bodies can lock their arms and feel good and support and recommend the budget. I, I don't know if we've ever been there in modern history. It's been adversarial. It's been butting heads in those final throws of the process, and that just sets it up for maybe a contentious vote with the voters. And I don't know if we can do that in the first mm -hmm. year, but it would be a great a goal to get to. I think that would be a mm -hmm. great goal. So maybe add collaborative to your joint goal thing. Yeah. Speaking of this, I would just observe that the council has scheduled its annual goal setting session for next Wednesday. Inevitably, a budget related goal will come up. So I, I just observe, in light of this idea, um, the council is going to be talking about goals, and I think budget will probably come up. So I'm not sure how they'll choose to deal with that, whether there's a way to put that to the side and, come and, and reconvene and come back with a budget goal. We'll have to talk about that. Yeah. Well, doesn't, doesn't following that sort of old process, doesn't that set us up for just kind of undermining <coughs> what you just wrote, wrote up there? Yeah, and I'll take the responsibility to talk with Council Holder, who's here earlier but had to leave. So I'll talk to her ahead of time and see what she's comfortable with um, and maybe either uh, enabling any conversation um, or maybe, you know, it might be appropriate that the Council begin its own discussion so it's prepared so that when it has a joint session, um, <coughs> You know, at least we already have some fuel, but then I hope everyone's willing to be um, flexible and creative and willing to change their mind when arguments and when, arguments are when uh, information is shared. I mean, the school board as well is going through their goal setting process, which is sort of um, a bigger set of goals, but certainly has financial implications. The first round was really doing pretty much what we're doing here and trying to find what was the same, what was different, and, and what people could agree to, and, and sort of shrinking that down. So they're, they too are in the process of doing goal setting, and, and maybe uh, maybe that would be a, a great topic for one of, one of these meetings. It's a fact meetings. that you've got to think about uh, carving out the one thing that's common, how much mm -hmm. money is going to be spent by the town side and the school side, and try and do, uh, convince each other of, of, of what what that ought to look like, uh, because the town would have arguments for why it might deserve some preference or priority. The school would make its points, and you kind of would have to just collaborate. And and how much? Because there's going to be people who say, no, 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 we really need to hold it down. Others are going to say, no, we're <clears throat> this is terribly important. You you can't you know do this successfully without making this financial commitment. Mm -hmm. And and that you're sixty percent of the budget and we're forty percent of the budget. Uh, so it's the one thing that we sort of collectively represent and and yet we don't really ever have a debate between our each other. We debate the, the seven of us, you debate the seven of you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it goes on these parallel tracks way down the road till we're both saying how do we get here? How, how are we going to jam this together in May? Mm -hmm. And typically at a time when we're paralyzed by the numbers. When you have the numbers in front of you, That's it changes right. the conversation. That's if, right. If I were the school board, I'd be a little bit upset about did all this work, and then the, a, a judgment was made at a certain point to mm -hmm. put a certain number up for referendum. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the school board, the town council saying, well, we, we tried to get the message across. <laughs> But, it, you know, it's, you guys are doing your thing and we're doing it. So I could see how early and more Con effort. Conversation. It's not going to ever be easy. <laughs> it would be very, very difficult. To, but well, maybe it would be, be. Also to the extent that, that we sometimes hear things coming down from the state after we have made a plan. Yeah. Then we learn. You know, so it changes our figures all along the process. Um, because they're really late with telling us what their new 
Wouldn't it be great you know, if they have a state in this conversation? Yeah. You have to change their budget process too. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes it very difficult for us because we think we're on one track and then all of a sudden we learn that the uh, teacher's retirement is going to be placed on the towns. Right. So that changes the whole game for us. And should the additional teacher's retirement come down, then once again, it's, you know, makes it, so many that could be at any point. by trying to uh, uh, point towards the mill rate the actual tax impact, tax increase, mm -hmm. uh, or decrease. Uh, but as I went through the process last year, I came to the conclusion, you can't, because you don't know. There's factors outside your control, factors outside the town council's control, that what you can predict is how much are you going to spend. And, and look at that number, mm -hmm. and, and not try to predict where the mill rate's going to end up. If you're satisfied with the spending level, Mm -hmm. then, then the mill rate will take care of itself. I think that piece that you're talking about, the mill rate piece where it had all the little boxes yeah. on the sheet that said if yeah. this, if this, if yeah. this, mm -hmm. I think that was more of a tool to let people know, like, hey, if, if it goes up X percent, yes. this is how much we're talking yeah, about. Yep. And it does give you that frame of reference, I think, that is invaluable in order for you to use that in your mind, saying, okay, so that's going to increase a person of a, and the I Tom used the number of 300000 on a home, on average yeah, home or whatever. For people right. working on a budget, I think cost, expenditure, is a better surrogate than anything else. Right, I think that was just a tool, is what mm -hmm. I'm right. That's mm -hmm. so tough. But it, it does, we have a lot of discussion in our, in our, our, our council school setting that let's have a uh, zero impact budget. There was a lot of discussion uh, around that topic. Mm -hmm. And I find that now to be looking at the wrong thing. Exactly. You should be looking at cost. Right, that's right. The other part will take care of itself. Yeah. Some days the state's going to do, do a stir. Other days, we're going to say, hallelujah. <laughs> how, why, uh, how did we get lucky this year? <laughs> Uh, but but we can't predict that, and it's largely out of our control. Unfortunately, the cost drivers, many of them are on the revenue side. You know, they're eleventh hour issues that we don't know, and it can really turn things on its head. So we've quietly moved on to number three. That's <laughs> 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 pretty good. Um, kind of it would be great if we got to the end of this process. And if we could articulate to folks, you know, if there is going to be an increase, if we could really say, and this increase is because we're going to make an investment in whatever, we talked about a vision process. Mm -hmm. I think if you could go to the voters and say, here's, here's the existing, you know, tax bill or whatever, we're asking for more because we're going to do technology in schools or we're going to do this. So if you could actually equate it to what it's, right. what it's going toward, mm -hmm. that might be a better way to engage our, our population. Is that how they want to spend resources or not? Yeah. So I think rather than a big number they don't understand, if we can boil it down to here's, here's some of the drivers. To Kate's and point, you know, it's all about it's, it's a narrative. If you can, yeah, well, if you can yeah. come up with the, the, the a narrative. compelling narrative. I mean, it, we have a really strange system where, you know, folks around this table spend more time than they care to to understand the budget and to get through a budget process, and then you put it out to the voters who can't be expected to know nearly what you know. Uh, and so it's, it's a really strange system we have in place. Yeah, okay. they don't know the narrative. Mm -hmm. Right. Council, I hate that really gets to the context of how the presentation to the public is made. Yeah. yeah. Not, and I should say to the public is both that when it's first introduced by the two chairs, but then also in that group forum or that open forum that we talked about. So that, you know, that's the presentation. You're not going to sit there and talk about what kind of gun. You're going to talk about what this investment in, in the community is going to provide um, new technology for our 9 through 12. It's going to provide um, energy efficiency at all of our municipal buildings. I mean, whatever the items might be. Um, totally, totally understand that part. Um, and in fact, I do think that one of the items in this area, and it kind of laps into the other, uh, so number three is about the, um, you know, the dialogue topics. I do think that we need to talk about if we are successful as a group, mm -hmm. I know we will be, the 14 of us and 16 including uh, the two staff members, uh, manager and tenant, what happens if the citizens reject our proposal at the end? We need to recognize that, uh, that impact up front so that we're prepared to, um, 
in responding to it. So what if we present, you know, town council's budget, um, whether it's fortunate or unfortunate, depends on your personal opinion, but isn't presented to the town um, for regular approval like the school boards. Mm -hmm. So what if ours is um, approved unanimously because we all agree with the process. We even have the school board support for that. But then the town then sits there and says no to the school's budget. What happens to our working group and then also what happens to our uh, this process that we've created um, and how do we respond to it? So I think this question was intended to kind of go maybe uh, hint at issues beyond finance and budgets, um, more to the relationship piece that we're all in this together. And, um, I know it's this budget here, but I think there's a lot of other pieces that end up coming back to benefit this process too. You know, I um, don't know where it fits, but you know, it, in my prior work experience, when new groups came together, one of the first things they spent some time doing is trying to create some norms about how they're going to behave, how they're going to communicate. And I, I see some threads in here about respect and some expectations for what this process might be like. That I don't know if that goes there, but I think if we could agree on yeah. how we want to work together as a group, how we can agree to disagree and not, yep. and those types of things I think would be really helpful. Council Chair Holbrook put forward eight or ten things that were kind of her priorities. I think she called them values or guiding principles. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of spoke to that issue. Uh, it, it, I, I love that idea, and, and particularly in a group like this, it's the whole, it's this group that sets the norms uh, in terms of what everybody agrees to, um, how everybody agrees to operate in the context of, of getting work done here. The, mm -hmm. the school board has their norms. Um, my my tap my um, uh, my leadership council has their norms, and every once in a while we have to go back and revisit them and say, well. Today it kind of felt like we were doing maybe not keeping tabs on, on yeah. these things. Do we really give everybody enough air time or whatever it was? And uh, and the and the board every year goes back and and they look and say, well, you know, we're doing pretty good here here. This is this is going to be the thing we'll focus on. And it's it's just a reminder because um, uh, human behavior is kind of funny. We get excited and do all sorts of things that are not consistent with <coughs> good collaboration. But that's consistent. I mean. It's Setting up those norms will determine how we then react to yeah. um, post-budget approval and pre- and post-referendum approval. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, these are things that will speak to the relationship. And, yeah. uh, you know, it will be budget initially and probably intensely, but it will be other stuff as you proceed through the course of the year. You know, for this group here, what, one of the things that I like to do with project management is um, after we have been successful in this year to have a post um, everything, um, uh, what do you call it? Wins and, uh, debrief? Kind of, yeah, kind of a debrief. You know, um, what did we do right and what did we, uh, could we have done better? And then what we can change going forward so that it becomes the norm for the next committee chairs uh, for our respective groups so that there's continuity um, in leadership style at the very least and that there isn't a volatility, uh, there isn't a dramatic change from year to year. So that would be, you know, like a, uh, like a well post, uh, post op. Yeah, 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 like a post op, you know. <laughs> not post mortem. No, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A post op uh, consultation between um, our committees. <laughs> you know, I think we call yeah. it lessons learned in yeah. project management. Just part of the Im improvement process, continuous improvement process. I'll just capture lessons learned. Yeah. That's puts it in a positive light as opposed to failures appreciated. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the headline right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A couple of other salient points I, I picked up on were kind of understanding um, external impacts. That was a, a notion mm -hmm. that came forward on the town council side. And un, un, unfunded, unfunded mandates, mandates yeah. kind of as part of that conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, those will also be part of the <coughs> major drivers. <coughs> I, I would assume, but I, that first one that's on the uh, town council side and the first one under understanding for the school board on our side are the same thing, basically. I, I had thought that uh, the town council does not have a good grasp on unfunded mandates uh, right. in the uh, school system. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think we've ever uh, had a good discussion 
with our legislative delegation mm -hmm. on what the effect is. Uh, and that seemed to me to be something that would be very valuable because I'm, I feel like I'm a novice, and yet it's an important subject for the town. Absolutely. I mean, if you really just look at, at two or three major things, even if that's all we bring forward to you, it would be a huge help just for any citizen who happens to want to hear it to begin to understand, particularly if you have any children in the schools, yeah, it's because there's going to be major changes in schools in this state, at least. So for you to hear what those are, I think, would really be an, an enormous help. The education help. helps because we're all speaking to members of the community. The um, advocacy with our uh, state legislative delegation, mm -hmm. uh, I think, is, is, and we as a town council have tried to increase our involvement in mm -hmm. that effort, not mm -hmm. necessarily on unfunded mandates particularly, but uh, on having predictability in revenue funding. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so it's, a, it's just something I think that would be valuable. On, on our side, Jackie Perry is heavily involved in the state in, in terms of mm -hmm. um, what's happening statewide, and yeah. she, she often brings us the latest and newest information mm -hmm. down from the legislature. Um, so that, that's a huge help to us. Mm -hmm. And we are all trying to, to communicate with Senator Millett and you know, um, uh, Amy Volk and, you know, trying so to hear. So that you know it and it, we can be apprised of it. Mm -hmm. So there's exactly. a common interest in engaging our, our legislative delegation. Um, mm -hmm. Your interest might be slightly different than ours, but we right. we need but predictability and funding is a very mutual we outlook for both of us. We hosted them last year. They yeah. came to one of our school board workshops to have some mm -hmm. conversations with yeah. us. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to say, is that something that you could do, is get them to come in and mm -hmm. talk to both yeah. boards or, or, or listen to both boards? Have lunch or have them only have to go out once. Mm. Yeah. I think that would be a great... Or to see what happened since the last time, what did they do for us since <laughs> that you guys met? Yeah. <laughs> well, and you quickly hear, at least my opinion was of that meeting we had, you quickly hear the two different opinions of what should happen at the state on these topics. So it doesn't really solve any problem for you. It just gives you the chance to say what you think. It doesn't mean there'll be some outcome that you... We also went up to Augusta, too, as a, as a board. And mm -hmm. we all went Testified. up and we talked to the legislators, mm -hmm. our group. We met with them. And, you know. Another point I might just mention that seemed to appear in both was transparency, just kind of this, uh, something that probably should just carry along with yeah. us and everything we do, but uh, and worth capturing just as a the notion. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I, would, I would that be a subset of the norms and guiding principles? Yeah, it could be. Sure. Yeah. Because um, to me, uh, when you think of, when you talk about transparency, there's also a level of trust. Um, and you know, I've made a couple of comments on that about being able to trust managers and department heads. But uh, I understand where there's a secondary. Well, I think you've done a, a great job of, uh, and, and, you know, we have to categorize these thoughts under certain questions, but I'm not sure it's even important where we put them. I think there's so much crossover I, here. I definitely agree that uh, transparency and trust belong together because uh, mm -hmm. until Tom told me at the end of our process last year that it was as good an effort at trying to communicate with each other uh, as, as, and he had thought we had built some trust and, and, and some willingness to try to work together. Uh, and no process is ever going to be, oh, you agree totally with me or I agree totally with you. It's unrealistic. But we, we did make progress. And, I, and so I, at the end of it, said, gee, I appreciate the, the professionalism uh, and capability of the school board so much more now that I went through the process. doesn't mean that we ended up agreeing on the numbers. That just can't be. But, it, but I had a great deal more respect for the where you were coming from and the effort you were making. Uh, and that, I thought, was a big step forward for me uh, uh, to, to be able to be effective in working as a finance committee member with the school board. So. Mm -hmm. and well, we're all elected officials. 
you know, so, so we're trying to do our jobs. Um, some of us are trying to do our job during the day and trying to do this job at night. So, um, you know, we, we don't come to these meetings attempting to be deceitful or deceiving or hiding anything. As a matter of fact, I think the school board is doing probably as much as they can possibly do to get the accurate information out there. Um, you know, you, can, you can't force people to read something or force people to inform themselves. That's you're up against that in the end. But, um, but on the notion of transparency and trust, page. clearly it needs, there needs to be strategies and efforts among this group. But then there's the whole issue of the public, too. And, and exactly. uh, there's a lot of crossover, but there are different strategies to make inroads and in gaining trust in, to the public side as well. Communication strategies and such. Yeah. So, uh, with Tom, uh, Tom, thank you very much. Yep. Very, very much. So, the goal in taking this information is to um, consolidate this, obviously, into a much smaller eight and a half by eleven, <laughs> um, so that you can all have one. Um, so, I believe what I'd like to do is actually probably we'll take the document that Tom presented for both the school board and the town council together, and then include this summary, an exec kind of in an executive summary, so that we can give it to the rest of our boards and. Town council members and uh, as part of my committee for us, and I'll have a conversation with Chris, or maybe you know you two can help him as well since he wasn't there. He might defer that stuff to him, um, and then move forward. So I, that way we can get feedback from the others on where we concise and did we include everyone's opinion to the extent possible, and then move forward. Um, the next item um, is really next steps, and given um, the information here, this might actually be shorter than 10 minutes. What I was actually hoping to do was to put into place a couple of things, um, not only for my committee, uh, but also for the, obviously the, uh, the notion, uh, consensus that we want to have a joint session of this board on a regular basis. And um, what would, um, when would we like to have those meetings? How frequent do we want those meetings? Um, for the finance committee, um, I believe we have a consensus that we're going to meet every second Wednesday of the month. Mm -hmm. um, in, at least until we get closer to the budget cycle. Um, and then we'll meet more frequently, probably on a weekly basis. Um, at least that's what I have reserved for now, and that's at 4 o'clock here in Chambers. And my goal is that um, we have alternate meetings um, for, with, you, uh, with the school board so that we can have those joint workshops. So maybe the next meeting, one of the agenda items I can talk with Chris is to have um, feedback regarding our conversation. So hopefully everyone will watch this and then they, we can bring the feedback, see if we need to condense anything um, or restate them and then that becomes in essence a working document for us. And then we talk really about at that next joint session, how do we implement that? And um, that might be the focus of the entire discussion because there's a lot that's in that we just talked about. We did it at the high level, but when you talk about implementation, you're talking about um, the synergies between the groups, you're talking about the uh, semantics of the planning process. The other piece of that I hope um, to have is that really we need to put into place what we would like to have as a joint timeline. So uh, what I will ask, um, I'm sure everyone, at least I, I think everyone might have it, is at least to use a reference point is last year's timeline um, and take into consideration some of the things that were shared, such as incorporating the school board earlier, um, having the dialogue change slightly different, uh, as well as the open forums. And, and uh, let's come up with a recommendation, you know, by January and what we'd like to have because, you know, the town manager and the superintendent need to know that they can work together mm -hmm. um, with the department heads if that's how we're going to go. I mean, we'll have to, I, mean, I know on the town side we will definitely need to have some type of meeting with department heads to hear, um, you know, the, what their cost drivers are as well as from the town manager. So, mm -hmm. uh, so the question I have is uh, what would you like to see me do? Um, and I can talk to Chris to kind of drive this for both our groups. Mm -hmm. um, to get prepared for that next meeting, and what is the best time for us to meet as a joint board again? Um, for me personally, yes. four <laughs> o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> is not a great time, but not, okay. you know, um, I would make it work. It's just tough, you know. With I have one that's not a driver. So oh, you're, right. you're saying the second Wednesday of the month would be the town council. is your town council finance meeting? Yeah. Is and, and that, I, I, would like, I want to talk about that because 
the second Wednesday, I during January, February, I may not be here between the first meeting and the third meeting. I expect I'll be traveling both, both for about 12 of those 14 days in between the first and third Wednesdays of the month. Okay. Might, might I suggest um, it would be ideal to have um, a timeline and a process understood uh, by the end of the year, if that's possible. Yeah. Would it be possible for this group to get back together, and we'll have to look at the calendar sometime, it would be late this month, uh, within a couple yeah. weeks, for the express purpose of looking at that. And yeah. that's something that George and I, can, and you and Chris can collaborate on that, uh, can work on in the meantime, so there's actually something tangible for the group to talk about. Yeah. Uh, it would be wonderful to have that done before the new year. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that would be quicker than we've great. ever done it. Mm -hmm. Is that where <coughs> I, don't, I don't want to make it too onerous. Sure. Yeah. So um, keep in mind that next Wednesday is the 17th, is the school board meeting, and then, I'm sorry, it's the town council, the 18th is the school board. So that means the 25th is Christmas. It's Christmas Day. So uh, to me, I think that would be very onerous to try to have a meeting either the two days before or the two days after. Double between uh, Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, I like that. Is that a problem? I mean, I speak I, up. That's I may or may not. You know, yeah, I mean, right. it's a holiday week, okay. I know. Yep. You, basically so, have, you basically have parents uh, or kids on school break. Yeah. Sure. yeah sure. So if you get, so actually I'll ask okay. uh, from all of us, um, the members, if we can, if you can email me on my town email um, three dates that are convenient for you and then also uh, on those dates two different times of the day. And I'll try to whittle that down between the six of us on what is convenient. I'll make it easier for you if you want. I can do a doodle poll for you. You can oh, okay. pull okay. them out just so everyone, everyone can respond and I'll have enough options that it will work yeah. for folks. I'm not familiar. Um, you will be. It's, like, it's like monkeys. Oh, oh okay. Sorry, got it. Thank you. What did you just call it? Doodle? Uh, doodle is the one I'll use. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that's great. Thank you. We can collaborate on that. So would you, I mean, typically as a group comes together to work together, they do the norm setting right up front. So would you see that along with um, the, the trying to end up with a final calendar proposal, which is really your, your schedule with the, the department heads is really not, not anything that involves us. So, um, so really what we're talking about are those things that are really joint events no. in the calendar. The only joint event would be the office. No. Oh. Um, so I thought it was me. I was like, oh. Um, so the way it's been handled in the past is that the school department is a department of the town's budget, so that's why they have their own presentation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, I was, that's why, personally, I think having it at the beginning is better because you're the first department that we look at um, as far as that presentation together. But, as, but aside from that timeline, we have a timeline of when uh, there is a budget presentation um, that Tom and I would do. There's there's a, a there's a, um, a uh, there's a public hearing which we're talking about you know being kind of a, a an, an open uh, town hall kind of thing. There's a, there needs to be a second one and there's and then there's um, the the council is very specifically it's very uh, prescriptive in terms of when you have to do the votes and right. and as well right. the the the, uh, the school board needs to do that same thing. So it's really uh, it's laying out that calendar right the, the big the calendar, master calendar. The master yeah. calendar. So um, I'm comfortable if this, if the committee is, is tasking our manager to work with the superintendent, if it's okay with the school board, to come up with at least a draft timeline. That'd be yeah. taken into consideration. Okay. Well, that's tonight. Everything that we talked about yep. tonight. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the legal considerations regarding referendums, votes, and timelines with your information. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think and, I would. And come up with a timeline that's respective of what we had a conversation with. And, um, I so think when you come back together, or whatever that is, might be early January is the date. Uh, there would be two agenda items I'm hearing. One might be to do some of these norm yeah, settings, the norm setting. and the other one was to talk about <coughs> and ideally approve a timeline in that yeah. process. Be, be yeah. if, you don't, if, you, if, you, if you don't mind, what I'd like to do on the norm <laughs> setting is almost do a similar survey of like we did today and okay. send it to all the members because it does impact all the members and not just the committee. Sure. That way everyone has a chance and an opportunity to bet. We can take that into consideration. And then we'll go through the same consolidation process. 
um, since there's only one item, hopefully it should be a quicker. Right? Mm -hmm. But let's distribute any written material that summarizes it before the meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, so my plan is to have study it. This, this, this will be the presentation that I give for the finance committee um, at, the, at our next meeting okay. next week. I guess I'd better get working on it. <laughs> if he doesn't, I guess. That easy, that, and what he handed up today wasn't. <laughs> um, so if that's good, um, so we'll do the survey. Um, I think I have, um, we've covered everything regarding the next steps, if everyone's comfortable. Um, is there anyone that would like to speak from the public that's here? No, just yeah, they're all, they're all well, thank you. And, I, and there were two other gentlemen that were actually here, but uh, three, I'm sorry. So I just want to say thank you for them attending. I really appreciate uh, them putting and listening through this. And uh, with that, if there's no other items, I'd like to uh, call for a joint adjournment. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Good. Five minutes over on our first round. Pretty, pretty good. good. Really good. Pretty good. Thank you. Happy holidays, everybody. They're coming with us. Yes, they are.